two hours versus 60 minutes. That's how long it took NASA compared to SpaceX to recover their astronauts from the ocean after splashdown. NASA's massive Navy ship struggled with winches and cables, while SpaceX's crew was already getting medical checkups. The same agency that landed on the moon, beaten by a company that barely existed 20 years ago. But how is this even possible? SpaceX uses one modified ship to do what NASA needs an entire fleet for. The techniques they develop don't just save time, they're revolutionizing how we think about bringing humans back from space. What we found will shock you. This isn't just about speed, it's about the future of space travel itself. Let's dive right in. December 11th, 2022. NASA's Orion spacecraft slams into the Pacific Ocean after completing the Artemis 1 mission. The clock starts ticking. What happened next completely changed how we think about bringing humans back from space. Picture this scene. The USS Portland, a massive amphibious assault ship, three football fields long, floating in the Pacific. Navy teams scramble across the deck. Small boats race toward Orion's floating capsule. But something's wrong. Winches groan under the strain. Cables tangle in the choppy water. The ship's enormous well deck slowly floods with thousands of gallons of seawater. This is supposed to be routine. Two hours later, Orion finally sits inside the ship's belly. Mission accomplished? Not quite. Because thousands of miles away, SpaceX engineers were watching this entire operation, and they were taking very detailed notes. Here's what NASA didn't know. While they perfected their Cold War recovery methods, SpaceX had been quietly building something revolutionary. Their weapon? A modified offshore supply ship called Geo Searcher. Originally designed for recovering Falcon 9 parts, this vessel became the backbone of human spaceflight recovery. But here's where it gets interesting. SpaceX's approach wasn't just different, it was completely backwards from everything NASA believed about spacecraft recovery. No flooding massive compartments, no teams of small boats fighting ocean swells, no two-hour extraction procedures. Instead, one crane, fast response crews, 60 minutes, done. The numbers are brutal. NASA, two plus hours, 50 plus crew members, amphibious assault ship SpaceX, 60 minutes, 15 crew members, modified supply vessel. How is this even possible? The answer lies in a design philosophy that NASA never even considered. SpaceX didn't just build a faster recovery system. They completely reimagined what it means to bring humans back from space. Dragon's secret weapon, a wide side opening hatch with a quick release mechanism. While NASA's Orion requires complex extraction procedures, Dragon astronauts literally walk out on their own, even after spending days floating in zero gravity. Think about that for a moment. You've just spent weeks in space, your body adapted to weightlessness, and you can still walk out of your spacecraft like you're getting off an airplane. The medical advantage is staggering. SpaceX ships carry full medical teams, ready to evaluate astronauts the moment they step aboard. NASA crews, they often wait additional time while well decks drain and equipment repositions. But here's what's really shocking. SpaceX's recovery ships can operate in rougher seas than NASA's massive vessels. Smaller, more agile, infinitely more efficient. The Geo Searcher, later renamed Megan, became legendary in spaceflight circles. This single ship recovered 24 astronauts across multiple missions, from the dramatic in flight abort test to the historic Demo 2 mission that returned human spaceflight to American soil. One modified ship accomplished what NASA needed an entire fleet to achieve. NASA's approach wasn't just slower, it was bleeding money with every mission. Every Orion recovery required massive Navy ship deployment, specialized well deck operations, extended crew time at sea, complex logistics coordination spanning multiple time zones. SpaceX's method? Deploy one ship, recover in one hour, fly astronauts home immediately. The time savings alone are mind-blowing. While NASA crews spend hours securing cables underwater, SpaceX astronauts are already receiving medical evaluations. While NASA ships slowly drain massive compartments, SpaceX helicopters are airborne heading to land. But the real kicker? Science experiments and time-sensitive research. 
When you're dealing with biological samples that degrade quickly, every minute counts. SpaceX's rapid recovery saves critical research data that NASA's slow methods often compromise. This isn't just about efficiency anymore. This is about the future of space science itself. Here's where it gets really interesting. SpaceX didn't stumble onto this superior method. They engineered it from the ground up. Dragon's interior design maximizes crew comfort and exit speed. Roomy seating, smart controls, and that game-changing side hatch. NASA's Orion, cramped, complex, requiring assistance for crew exit. The recovery crane system SpaceX developed can lift Dragon directly onto deck in minutes. NASA's well-deck approach requires flooding, positioning, winching, and draining. A process that takes exponentially longer. But here's the twist nobody saw coming. SpaceX's speed advantage isn't just about technology, it's about philosophy. NASA designed Orion like a traditional spacecraft. SpaceX designed Dragon like a modern transportation system. The results speak for themselves. SpaceX meets NASA's requirement of getting astronauts out within 60 minutes. NASA's own system takes twice that long. This isn't just about bragging rights. This efficiency gap reveals something fundamental about the future of human spaceflight. SpaceX's approach scales. Their methods work for cargo missions, crew rotations, even private spaceflight passengers. NASA's traditional system? It's designed for infrequent, high-stakes government missions. The strategic implications are enormous. As space commercialization accelerates, recovery speed becomes a competitive advantage. Faster turnarounds mean more missions, reduced costs, improved safety margins. But here's what's really revolutionary. SpaceX proved that sometimes the best solution isn't the most complex one. While NASA engineered elaborate systems requiring massive resources, SpaceX achieved superior results with elegant simplicity. This changes everything we thought we knew about aerospace engineering. In 2025, the GO Searcher completed its final mission on the East Coast, helping return two stranded NASA astronauts during Crew 9. Then it retired to Louisiana. This wasn't sentimental, it was strategic. SpaceX is already deploying newer, more efficient recovery vessels. Their goal? Reduce launch costs by up to 30% while maintaining their speed advantage. The message is crystal clear. SpaceX isn't just competing with NASA's recovery methods, they're making them obsolete. Meanwhile, NASA continues using the same basic approach they've relied on for decades. Large ships, complex procedures, extended timelines. The Artemis program proves NASA can still accomplish incredible feats, but at what cost in time and efficiency? Here's what's really happening. SpaceX's Dragon recovery system exposes a fundamental problem with government space programs. NASA operates under different constraints. Safety reviews, bureaucratic oversight, risk-averse decision-making. Every procedure requires extensive documentation and approval processes. SpaceX operates like a tech startup. Rapid iteration, aggressive timelines, performance-driven decisions. If something doesn't work, they fix it fast and move on. The result? A private company that barely existed 20 years ago is teaching NASA how to recover astronauts from space more efficiently. But here's the question that keeps industry experts awake at night. If SpaceX can revolutionize recovery operations this dramatically, what else can they completely reinvent? This recovery revolution isn't just about Earth operations. It's about establishing the infrastructure for humanity's expansion into space. Mars missions will require rapid, efficient recovery systems. You can't afford two-hour procedures when operating millions of miles from Earth with limited resources. Commercial space stations need quick crew rotations. Extended recovery times become bottlenecks that limit operational efficiency. Space tourism demands passenger-friendly systems. Wealthy customers won't tolerate lengthy, uncomfortable recovery procedures. SpaceX's Dragon recovery system is the prototype for all future human spaceflight operations. Fast efficient, designed for routine use rather than occasional heroics. The implications extend far beyond just getting astronauts out of capsules. This is about fundamentally reimagining how humans travel to and from space, 
And NASA just got a master class in modern aerospace engineering from a company that started in a garage. The question isn't whether SpaceX's methods are better. The question is, how long will it take everyone else to catch up? And what happens to the space agencies that don't? So here's what we learned today. SpaceX didn't just beat NASA's recovery time. They completely reimagined what's possible when you throw out the old playbook. Two hours versus 60 minutes. That's not just a number. It's a revolution in thinking. While NASA clung to methods from the Apollo era, SpaceX built the future of human spaceflight recovery. But this story goes deeper than just capsules and cranes. This is about what happens when innovation meets bureaucracy, when startup mentality challenges government tradition, when elegant solutions replace complex systems. The real question is, if SpaceX can revolutionize recovery operations this dramatically, what's next? Starship landings? Mars colonization? Deep space exploration? We're living through the greatest transformation in human spaceflight history. And companies like SpaceX are writing the playbook for humanity's future among the stars. What do you think? Are we watching the end of government space dominance or the beginning of true space collaboration? Drop your thoughts below because this conversation is just getting started. And if you want to dive deeper into how SpaceX is changing the game, our next video breaks down their Starship recovery plans that will make Dragon look like child's play. Thanks for watching Space Corps. We'll see you in the next one. After Flight 9, Musk quietly revealed something that stunned engineers worldwide. He's removing one grid fin from Starship's booster. Why would he mess with a system that's delivered three perfect catches? The answer is Mars. One fin weighs three tons. Remove it, and you can carry three tons more supplies to Mars. That's enough oxygen, water, and equipment to keep astronauts alive longer. But here's the catch. Recent Starships have been exploding. S-33... S-34, S-35, all destroyed. S-36 blew up so hard the flames were visible from miles away. So why is Musk testing this risky change now? What he revealed about Mars missions will change everything you think you know about space travel. Let's dive right in. The room fell dead silent. There stood Musk, next to a massive Starship booster, pointing at something that made every engineer's heart skip a beat. The presentation slides flashed the impossible. Only three grid fins, where there should be four. This wasn't a design error. This wasn't a typo on the slideshow. This was Elon Musk betting humanity's Mars future on removing three tons of proven flight hardware. Three tons. That's heavier than two cars stacked together. Compare that to Falcon 9's tiny 140-kilogram fins and you realize we're talking about something 20 times more massive. Something that's worked perfectly three times in a row. But Musk saw something nobody else did. A problem so massive, it could kill Mars colonization before it even begins. Every single kilogram is a matter of life and death. When you're traveling to Mars, you can't stop at a gas station. You can't call for supplies. Everything you need to survive must fit in your rocket. And right now, Starship isn't caring enough. Here's the brutal reality. Removing one three-ton grid fin instantly creates space for 3,000 liters of water. That's enough to keep four astronauts alive for an entire extra month on Mars. Or it's room for oxygen systems. That could mean the difference between coming home and dying 140 million miles from Earth. But wait, there's more. The fuel savings are absolutely staggering. Less weight during launch means less fuel burned. That extra fuel, it can push the upper stage further, creating massive safety margins for the complex orbital dance required to reach Mars. Think about this. NASA's plan requires 14 separate tanker flights just to fuel one Mars mission. 14 launches, 14 opportunities for something to go catastrophically wrong. Every gram of efficiency multiplies across all 14 flights. The math is terrifying and beautiful at the same time. But here's the question that's keeping SpaceX engineers awake at night. Can three fins 
Do what four have been doing flawlessly? This is where the story gets absolutely terrifying. Grid fins aren't just pieces of metal bolted to a rocket. They're the steering wheel of a 230-foot-tall missile screaming through Earth's atmosphere at supersonic speeds. Remove one? You've just changed the fundamental physics of how this monster flies. For decades, rocket science has lived by one sacred rule. Symmetry equals survival. Four fins arranged in perfect 90-degree intervals, creating flawless balance in every direction. It's predictable. It's safe. It works. But Musk's new design? Three fins positioned at 90-90 and 180 degrees. Asymmetrical by design. Unbalanced on purpose. Every aerospace engineer on the planet should be screaming, that's insane.